You have a talk that explores the cultural side of microservices. What's the relationship between culture and microservices architecture? I'd argue what is the question between technology and the culture around it? There are very few problems that actually are strictly technological, even within tech companies. Um, the talk that I'm giving is about Conway's Law, which was postulated in 1968, which basically says that any code that is written by a group will have the communication structures of that group communicate, or communicated and reflected in the code, and vice versa. So you see this feedback loop of code looking like the organizations that wrote it and organizations looking like the code that they develop. So I think you see that a lot with technology, is that you, you build what you know, you know what you build, and your groups develop around those. Do you feel that microservices itself can serve as a catalyst for broader cultural change within an organization, or am I like really reaching on that one? No, I think it certainly can. Um, I think DevOps is an example yeah. of that. You've got you've got cultural change affecting the architecture. You have architecture affecting the cultural change within organizations. And microservices is really about smaller, more compact units having strong agreements between between themselves and whomever else they're talking to. And this works within uh, organizations as well. If we agree on an SLA, I agree that I'm going to come visit you for a video and you agree that you're going to interview me, then we have a strong agreement and this happens. If we're not really sure and maybe we should all hang out, how often does that work out? <laughs> the uh, spontaneous interview. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, right. yeah really we should totally right talk. Right, yeah, call right. me. We'll do that. We'll do that. What do you expect, expect to see happen within microservices over the next couple of years? Well, microservices, for some value or another, has been around a very long time. I think right now the term microservices, as opposed to something that was very similar to the service-oriented architecture of the late 90s, I think the term is very exciting right now, and I think we're seeing a lot of play in it. Um, I'm also program chair for OSCON, as you know, and uh, we went from zero talks with the word microservices in it last year to more than 30 proposed this year. So I think what we're seeing is um, buzzword bingo right now, but it, attention being paid paid to a very good architectural paradigm, and an architectural paradigm that allows us to move faster as technology commoditizes pieces of the business. Who runs their own uh, email service anymore? Not really very many people unless it differentiates them. So we find a composable internet at this point. What do you feel is the relationship between DevOps and software architecture? I mean, do you, do you see software architecture kind of evolving in a similar way to DevOps? I think they're converging at some level. You have good practices that are no longer um, as magical as they were 20 years ago. It's no longer the same sort of cutting edge. It's no longer the independent differentiator that knowing about good architecture used to be. And so you'll be able to use repeatable patterns more often. And then once you want, once you're able to repeat things, you get into ideas like infrastructure as code or architecture as uh, Units, you get Docker containers, you get repeatable pieces that then become composable microservices, composable services that allow you to build bigger and better things by standing on the shoulders of giants at some level. Last question for you. What mm -hmm. people or projects are you following these days? Mm, I just spent a week at Elasticon, so I am paying a lot of attention right now to uh, what they're doing and how they're doing it, both as an open source project and a company, and uh, how they're going ahead and growing very fast. I'm also paying a lot of attention to Docker because everyone is excited about it, and I want to understand how it is different than containers have been for the last 15 years. So I want to understand how it's going to change architecture, how it's going to change deployments, and how it's going to change um, a immutable, change to an immutable infrastructure. More of the uh, servers as cattle instead of servers as pets. Yeah. So looking, looking forward to the broader picture of uh, fungible assets, whereas we didn't used to think of them that way. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. Yeah. You're welcome.